Okay, so, hello, my name is Bob. You cannot pass until Joe says you're allowed to. Well, all right, then let's go ask Joe if we're allowed to pass. Hello, Joe. Hello, I am Joe. You are now allowed to pass. All right, cool, so let's go back and pass then. Hello, my name is Bob. You cannot pass until Joe says you're allowed to. But Joe said we're allowed to. <laughs> so we got a little situation going on here. Bob is not letting us pass until Joe says he can pass, but Joe is already saying we can pass no matter what. So what's going on here? And the answer is, there's no way for Joe to actually tell Bob the event that we're allowed to pass. But he will be able to today, because today we're gonna be learning about switches, which are gonna be a global database of these things that can turn on and off that each event can access and manipulate in order to check and see how things are going on. It's a little hard to explain, but just imagine this. Say we talk to Bob, he's gonna check see if switch one, for example, is turned on or off. If it's turned off, that means he's not gonna let us pass. But if we talk to Joe, Joe's gonna turn switch one on, and then when we go back, Bob is then gonna see switch one is turned on and then let us pass. And that is a basic concept of how switches work. Like I said before, they're gonna be pretty much a global database throughout your game that your events will be able to use to manipulate each other. So let's get straight into it. To start off, we're gonna go straight into our Joe event right here and make so he turns on switch one, quite literally. We're gonna go to this thing right here called control switches within the first tab. When we press on it, we'll bring up this very small little window. We'll click on this little place right here and you'll notice we have all these lists of all these numbers and each number represents a switch. So for example, we choose number one right here. We can give it a name. We can not give it a name. It depends on you and we'll call it, for example, my switch. Ooh, whoa. Switch, there we go. So number one is now called my switch. And I'm gonna set my switch on, as opposed to off, or we're gonna hit it on. Hit okay, and now when we talk to Joe, at the very end of all this dialogue, he's gonna turn number one, my switch on. And now we can make so Bob can check see whether the switch is turned on or off, and then make actions accordingly. Now keep in mind that at the beginning of your game, all of your switches are gonna be turned off. So switch one will not be turned on until we talk to Joe, which means if we go into Bob, we can make it so he's not going to let us pass until switch one is turned on. And how are we going to do this? We have a quite a few amount of options, but let's try this. I want you to go up here and click new event page, and that's going to create a new event pretty much in this same event. Now you're probably thinking a new event page, that means you're just going to add more events onto the same event? And the answer is not really. Instead of just adding like more events to the current event, this is actually going to create an entirely new event that will appear on this spot if a certain condition is true. So for example, if we go over to the conditions box right here, choose my switch right here and hit OK, that means this event will be here if my switch is turned on, otherwise this event will be here. And the way it works is pretty simple. It's going to go to the highest numbered page, say page 2, and check its condition first. If it's true, we're going to see page its 2 event right here, otherwise we're going to see page 1's event. So, as you can see, page two is just gonna be a completely blank event. It's gonna have below character's priority, trigger the action button, and nothing's gonna happen. So for the most part, it's completely unnoticeable to the player. On the other hand, if my switch is turned off, we're gonna be seeing our Bob character right here blocking our path. But that's enough wasting time, let's see this in action. So to start off, let's go meet our friend Bob right here. He's gonna tell us we're not allowed to pass cause Joe hasn't given us permission yet. So let's go up to Joe and ask for permission. He'll say, hello, I am Joe, you're not allowed to pass. And when we go back down, we'll find that Bob has mysteriously disappeared. We can walk over top of his event and go into the house, and we have been allowed to pass. And the reason for this is like we discussed before. Joe is going to turn Switch 1 on, and when Switch 1 is on, we're not going to see our Bob event. Instead, we're going to see our blank event on page 2 right here, which we can walk over, ignore, and not even see it exists. Now, this is the first way we can do this, but there's actually another way we can do this. In fact, let's try it out right now. So let's go to delete event page to delete page two, and instead, we're going to create a conditional branch. To do so, simply go into the first tab, click conditional branch, and we're gonna be brought up to this huge new section with all these new tabs. All you need to worry about is the switch part right here. We're gonna check to see if my switch right here is set to on, as you see right here. We'll hit okay, and now we're gonna be brought to this little cool thing that's gonna have this little space in between it. And this little space right here is going to be activated if my switch is on. So for example, if we click in here and say, Joe gave you permission, as you see right here, then we can do that when Joe has given permission. And then another thing we can do is we go to say like our movement thing, which should be right around right here. We'll set it so this event moves left. We're gonna wait for completion, hit okay. And now when switch one is on, He's gonna say Joe gave you permission and move to the left. So starting off, 
Bob is going to say, hello, my name is Bob. You cannot pass and all that stuff. But then he's not going to say, you have information from Joe, and he moves left because the Switch 1 isn't turned on. But if we go switch, turn Switch 1 on, like, so, hello, I'm Joe, you're not allowed to pass. We'll go back, we'll talk to him again, he'll say the same stuff, my name is Bob, you cannot pass, but then he's gonna say, Joe gave you permission, and then he's gonna move to the left, cause switch one was turned on. Now we can go to the house, same as before. And that's another way we can make this happen. Now there's actually a third way we can do this, which would probably be the most effective and the one you want to do in your actual game, which is use an else branch in your conditional branch. So if you go into your conditional branch like I just did and hit space, you can open it back up to edit. You wanna go down here and say, click create else branch. So what's gonna happen is, if switch one is on, it's going to do all this stuff right here. The Joe gave you permission and set movement route. But if it isn't on, and it's the opposite of true, that means we're going to do this else branch right here. So for example, if you want to do, put this in here, cut this and paste it in here. Now what's going to happen is, step one, it's going to check see if switch one is on. If it isn't on, it's going to do a default dialogue, which is, hello, my name is Bob and you cannot pass. But if it is on, he's going to say, Joe gave you permission and move left. And that's really all there is to it. So now when we talk to him when Switch 1 is off, he's going to say, my name is Bob, you cannot pass. Then we're going to go turn on Switch 1 by talking to Joe. So, hello, I am Joe, you're not allowed to pass. We're going to go back, and now he's going to skip the entire beginning dialogue and just go straight to the point, which is, Joe gave you permission, and then he's going to move to the left. We're going to go in, we're going to be happy, this is going to be great, and everything's going to work perfectly. And that's pretty much how switches are going to work. Like I said before in the very beginning, there's just going to be a bunch of data that you can access or manipulate with each event, then each event can react to whether or not it's on and off. And that's how you can pretty much make it so your game is dynamic and things change over time. In the next tutorial, we're going to be going over the even more complex version of these switches, which is variables, which are pretty much switches, but you can set them to numbers. And they get bigger, smaller, left, right, up, down. It's gonna be crazy. And that's all for this video. If we walk outside, we'll go straight into Bob because he's still standing there. But we won't even care. And that's all for now. Until next time. Bye.